very regularly with us. So they really live up to this value. So let's go and see what we can pick up from today's. It's a very simple icebreaker video. Uh, nothing um, rocket science about this video, but let's see what you want to, what it stirs inside you, what insights you have. May I come in, sir? Yes, stand here. Why do you always come late? Sir, it is the bus which makes me late. What time do you leave home? I always leave home at quarter to eight. How far is your home from here? It is about three kilometers from here. That is why you get late. You leave your home very late. Sir, I take my breakfast at 7.30 a.m. What time do you get up? I get up at about 7 a.m. Don't you offer your prayer? Not regularly. My dear. It is a bad habit. Change your routine. Always get up early in the morning. Offer your prayers and go for a morning walk. Sir, there is no park near our home. No problem. You can walk along the street in the morning time. Take breakfast at right time and then leave for school. You are right, sir. From tomorrow, I shall never be late. Good. One thing more keep in mind. Regularity and punctuality conquer the mountains. Thank you very much for your good advice. Can I sit now, sir? Oh yes, of course. Right, so regularity and punctuality, we have covered punctuality before. Okay, so any insights, anything which has stirred inside you, something from your school life or from your spiritual school now, which all of us are a part of, so you can carry on. And you can mention in the chat box, we have around, oh, we've passed our time, I forgot, sorry. We have a few minutes. People are very regular on this, but they are very silent today. <laughs> okay. Right. Are you putting something in the chat and I'm missing? Just let me see that. Okay. Or if there is no, there's still nothing. Right. So it's okay. So I think uh, time is up. And over to Brother Jayesh for the first exercise. Hope you can open up with him. Because don't make him feel scared. He's joining us for the first time. <laughs> So over to you. Thanks. Thank you, Brother Mananaj. Regularity. One of the most undermined and underestimated virtue of all. And so today we take this opportunity to take a moment to just step back and reflect on what is the need or what is the importance of regularity in our lives. So let's take a moment here to just reflect on what are the benefits of regularity. So just think sorry, about all Sorry the... to interrupt, uh, Brother Yogesh. Yeah, I think uh, is the chat enabled now because Sister Raina is saying... Uh... I, I can't figure it out. We'll just sort this out. And in the meantime, you can carry on. So, Brother Jogi, yeah, now it is disabled. Sorry about all that. And time is still there, Manoj. We had another few minutes for uh, icebreaker. No problem. That's okay. Since we've already started. So, Brother Yogesh, you can carry on. No problem. So, now it's enabled, not disabled. Yeah. Okay. So, let's take a moment and just reflect upon your life experience. So think about uh, your life experiences um, and at instance where you have felt that regularity would bring about a difference in the outcome. Let's take a minute, a moment to just reflect upon your life and your life experiences so far and think about the importance as per any of your experiences that could have brought a difference if you if you would have used this virtue of being regular periodic just take a moment 
and think about it. It could be your work life, your personal eating habits. It could be your financial stability, your sleeping routine. Just think about the various aspects where you could have applied this virtue that could make a difference in your life. And now, we open the floor for you to discuss and to reflect upon what have you thought about which aspect in your life you're most welcome to unmute yourself and share or you could just jot down in the chat box below Um, Shanti. So for me, I find eight quality which I'm creating, you know, when I am regular. So it means I am organized. I have a planning intellect. I'm creating order in my mind and my life. Clarity. I'm confident. Self-insurance. Determination. And it creates a sense of value. So that is... Uh, what I find, you know, by uh, by being regular for Amrit Vela, studying the Merli, uh, uh, you know, all of this. Beautiful, Michael. Thank you for sharing your experience. Anybody else would like to share? Just a couple. Like, a Shanti. Yes. Uh, for every bigger uh, success, so regularity is a must. Otherwise, you can't think of it even. Only Baba can do miracles. So every success in life is due to that. We have practical experience in that. Thank you. But we have to also take that one step of being regular. Anyone else would like to share? Yeah, being regular, you know, it, it increases your grasping power and the stress level decreases because you're tuned to that particular kind of thing. But uh, being monotonously regular is also a drawback because we need to be, we need to have a, a, a balance between flexibility and regularity. Otherwise, it becomes a little bit monotonous. Beautiful sharing, Sister Rana. We have to bring in regularity, but with a taste or a virtue of having flexibility and varieties. As we say, right, well, variety is a spice. So how could you do that? Om Shanti, Brother Jesh. Om Shanti, Brother Vijay, thank you. Please accept my greetings of love, peace, and happiness. A regularity means regular to be rightly thinking, rightly thoughtful. If you are regular, what type of thoughts you should have? What thoughts of speech you should have? What should our action should you have? If you are regular in these right thoughts, right karma, right speech, 
you will get success whatever you do in life thank you om shanti thank you so much for sharing and we have a couple of sh sharings in the chat box below it's does guilt um it's it brings in stability and strength getting up early regular habits bring in a strong foundation so i think we have a couple of uh, more sharings out here so we'll just jot down a few of them the main ones on what are the benefits of being a tiger so brother didipak if you have uh, ready the slide uh, we can um, share the slide and uh, look upon some of the benefits that we have seen one is uh, no blame on others taking in responsibility for the self -help. one would be remembering easier in our regular habits giving us stability and strength in our attitude what are our other benefits is getting up early may having morning pleasants regularity brings in a strong foundation gives us clarity gives us confidence gives us determination and is responsible and drives us to the success it increases the grasping power and it brings down the stress helps in having elevated thoughts and doing the right actions towards the success and being tired regular also helps in making a pattern or bringing in that habit of being continuing having a continuous practice of whatever we are do, doing so i so with this benefits i hand it over back to brother mamanoj hey thank you we are being very extra regular today <laughs> we are completing every exercise before time that's very good excellent so i what i would do is now uh, so I, let me make the announcements now itself since we have a lot of time so the ones who have i can see many new participants as well and we have crossed again 90 so the ones who have joined new can you please uh, share your email addresses and uh, you know whatsapp numbers so that we can keep in touch with you send you all the materials the review materials as well and uh, because these this is the last year of the workshops and the series um, we'll see what we can do next year starting diwali this year 2024 that will be our last 100th episode so if you can please share your email addresses and whatsapp to either vidhi sister or uh, sister an and uh, now after having discuss the advantages and before we move on to the action planning let us just go into a meditative mode because i think majority of you keep saying baba baba which is quite good it is remembering the divine the supreme being and i hope the ones who are new to be case they are used to these words baba baba now so i hope you are not intimidated by this word and this word basically is we always connote it or try to address the divine supreme being god ishwar allah whatever you want to say with baba baba is a very hindi word which means basically father in hindi the godfather we say in english so let me just share the screen and uh, move on to the meditation part bit of it we can extend little bit of meditation today since we have more time thank you brother jayesh first time i'm getting it so early so let's move on so we have a nice visual for you you can see the regular stream the regular flow of the river of the water and let's begin 
as always, let's take a deep breath in and out. Inhale and exhale and relax your body. And as you do so, look at the regularity of the breath, the way it comes in and goes out. Keep doing it for a few more times. As you relax your body, your mind also starts getting more and more stable and focused. Today, as we dive deep into this consciousness of I, the being, the beautiful energy, the soul energy that I am, ask oneself. Am I regular in my thoughts? Which means, am I regularly and consciously creating powerful and positive thoughts? The answer is, of course, yes. Can I do something to be more regular in this aspect? Looking at my daily spiritual routine, getting up early morning for my early morning meditation, attending the spiritual class daily at the center. Carrying on with my daily chores of daily life. And as the day comes to a close, my evening meditation so whatever pattern I have as a regular pattern in my spiritual life, look at each aspect and see, am I creating purposeful, positive and powerful thoughts on a regular basis doing all these daily activities. What is it that disturbs my mind? What makes me lose my controlling power? Let's try to identify those weak links, the weak points, and work on them. Because I am the child of the Supreme Being, who is the ever pure, ever loving, ever stable, and ever regular. The Supreme can always be regular in teaching me through His divine teachings. Can I not be regular in inculcating those teachings in my life?
let me ponder on this aspect. And how is it, and what is it can I do out of the way now to help me increase my regularity? Not only in the daily routine aspect, but also at the thought, word, and action level. With this, I think it's 8988 8 India Times. So I'll just stop sharing the screen. And this is in order for you to get ready for the next action planning activity. And I'll hand it over to Sister Anu. And we'll stick to our 15 minutes as always, if you don't mind. And uh, then I'll take some more time because there are many things to share in the slide summary sharing today. So over to you, Sister Anu. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Manoj. And um, it's so beautiful to reflect on regularity that we are doing. And um, uh, that was beautiful meditation that gave us a little bit of that idea of that layers in our life in different parts that regularity is important. And I, I think most important is that thoughts, when we are regular with having positive thoughts, because thoughts create life moment. Um, so uh, for the benefits that we reflected through, that gives us the motivation to increase it or keep the regularity in our life. There are two points actually came later, if I can share from the benefits. Um, Eva says, builds trust and strengthens relationships if I'm regular. Can really spread to many aspects of a life and give us benefit. And also Lara says, I liked waking up late today, waking up early and benefits have changed my existence. So it's beautiful. So let's hold on to that, that benefits we have recognized by being regular. What is that it gives to our life? And let's look at our action planning. That what is that I would do or I have been thinking to do and we still can't implement and sometimes we think, oh, from tomorrow I'll do. What is that you would do to bring regularity and increase or keep it, inculcate regularity in your daily routine or any specific? So let's take a moment. To reflect on this like one minute and then we'll take your share. Thank you. Uh, very clearly that ways that you will implement um, to increase regularity in your life. Anybody who would like to share, please, you're welcome to unmute and share. I know chat sure. is... Yes, yes, 
हर घड़ी अंतम घड़ी है Yeah, this is uh, last moments, or time is really uh, flying very fast. You cannot post. Perfect. Shall I? Yeah, yeah, please. You basically tell us three things: thoughts, words, and actions. So, as uh, this brother said uh, earlier, it was like uh, before sleep, you think about or reflect on your daily, uh, daily. thoughts and words and action and then make a plan and and uh, waiting for your sleep time would be too late okay so we have this traffic control system also in place and we have it on your mobile and all but then if the state of mind when that traffic control rings is are we have to stop uh, stop it or snow that okay that that Put indicates that your thought <laughs> that indicates that your thought has in hasn't been very regular in that past one hour so in that one hour okay when that traffic control is ringing if i am in a good if i am in a state of mind that i can listen to it the one minute song uh, that one minute song and then my state of mind is okay okay that's the indicator whether you are uh, you know your thoughts has been regular or not so when that is in place the words will automatically take care of itself but on an action level a lot of things happens which we have not planned okay some things comes out of the blue and the regularity gets disturbed so um, on a professional level uh, if you are uh, in armed forces or uh, an emergency services uh, etc then it's a totally different matter you have to be rigid sometimes but uh, as i told you as i told earlier also uh, there has to be a flexibility um, a balance between flexibility and regularity and if something has happened that has disturbed or you know cause a change in your regular habits instead of wasting time in uh, how why what and all if you are able to revert back to your uh, original routine uh, within uh, no time uh, within a day or within whatever time is suitable for you then it is good enough okay that flexibility and the regularity balance can be maintained that's what i think thank you for beautifully explaining yeah so flexibility according to what is maybe something urgently comes that uh disrupts your um yeah uh regular pattern of the day but i loved it the traffic control is the traffic of your thoughts and every hour if we can put uh, an alarm but in brahma kumaris we have a um set up that every hour there is a traffic control that enables you as rena very beautifully explained uh, to check uh, if my thoughts were regular regular with positive peaceful and calm thoughts on that's a good checking thank you so much rena and how it affects words and action yes geeta sister geeta you can uh, om shanti about regularity i would not say in general but personally at the personal level for me i would say whatever you want regularity in your life my first point will be i would not use the word routine because then it's kind of gets boring or forced so regularity should come naturally if you enjoy it and you have taken some responsibility and think of others as well as your own growth and routine makes it kind of boring but routine is good uh, when we are doing something together for example if i am going to school or office or even joining the class or even joining the murli class regularly because that brings kind of discipline your mind most important thing is we have to discipline our mind and to discipline that i would retain the enthusiasm or interest in whatever i am doing and uh, it should help others also when it is a gathering if i am late or or very irregular then people cannot depend on me for anything so to have the trust mm-hmm. of other people being helpful and cooperative and disciplining my own mind to have everything in my life very regularly um i would say spiritual as well as materialistic growth yeah thank you yeah you you will be dependable and trust growth and that's very important keeping the harmony in relationship so 
own as well as in a team or group. Thank you, Sister Gupta. Um, anyone else who wanted to share? Maybe Om the... Shanti, DDG. DDG, bye. Quickly, let's give others also all opportunity, but we'll hear you. And, all my dear brothers and sisters, please accept greetings of love, peace, and happiness. Once you have a determination that I want to be regularly happy, regularly peaceful, regularly blissful, then you will know whose company you should be always. So the first company is your own thoughts. And in your own thoughts, the first company is with the Supreme Court. So if you remember that I want to be regular in happiness and peace, Mm -hmm. You will also remember that you will be regular in touch with the right company and the right company is Supreme Power, who is peaceful, ocean of peace, ocean of love, ocean of happiness. So being, remain connected with the Supreme and surely you will be regular in getting happiness all along your journey of life. Om Shanti. Shanti. I love that, Re being regular in happiness. Yes, Hathinder Kumar, you would like to share? Uh, thank you, brother and sister. Uh, doc, uh, Dr. Harbhajan Singh Brach has given this uh, opportunity to join uh, these uh, beautiful souls. I enjoy really uh, the company of uh, powerful souls over here. Thank you very much for this today. Thank you for joining in. Happy you are here with us. Thank you. In the chat, I see Jayanti says a very practical one that silence and remembrance of Baba while eating. So remembrance of the divine while eating. Um, she wants to uh, increase that, um, being regular in, being silent and in remembrance of God. And then also um, Michelin sister says, uh, who is our French translator, plan and follow your schedule whatever, do not think too much, just do it and the new habit will be easier and easier to follow. So it will become regular. So we really have to check the simple things we lack and then we run into irregularity that creates stress. Plan and follow your schedule. Yes, uh, Gaurav uh, Agarwal, brother, do you like to share? Yeah, thank you. So <clears throat> I'm one of the probably the laziest person on this earth. But yes, uh, one thing that has really helped me is putting multiple reminders, you know. So, okay, if my Amrit Vela reminder is uh, used to be like four o'clock, so I would uh, often miss it or, you know, tend to, you know, get delayed. But if I do it like, you know, three o'clock, then 3.15, then 3.30, I more than often, you know, tend to make it. But, but then the most important thing that, you know, if I know that whatever whatever am I supposed to or you know uh, what is there for me in future if I remember that I've always heard uh, you know in so many classes that yes if you take uh, God along with you and you remember what is it that you are uh, you can gain you know in future but that doesn't work for me honestly uh, but yes uh, what works for me is that you know I tend to think that okay God is my friend so if he's my friend so I can be lazy, you know, that kind of thing. But yes, uh, the only practical thing that really works for me, uh, being regular in whatever, uh, for the classes, for Amrit Vela, or for all other activities, you know, uh, is multiple reminders for everything. You know, make a schedule as somebody pointed out very rightly. Mm -hmm. So that worked for me. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Multiple reminders. Yeah, that I'm sure some of us will take. Uh, Bridgepal, brother, you want to share? Okay, so this should be the last sharing, maybe time, or maybe unmute, another. unmute, brother Bridgepal first. Yeah. Uh, are you able to unmute? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Today, this discourse on regularity, it is a coincidence that today I got this medal from my center. For this regularity, wow, which I'm presenting here. Wow, such a timing! What a timing! Great, yeah, timings have coincided. And when I brought it at home, I showed it to my grandson, who is a student of class eight. He said that a regular student is written, so he asked me, How you are student? 
So I told him it is a Ishwari Vishwadhyaya, and if you are regular and punctual, you will attain your objective in your life as well. Right. So regularity means here attending the murlis in the morning regularly and taking one and two points daily and then following it up Shri Mat. Right. And then in the early morning you get up and then in silence, in solitude, when you connect with God, then you attain powers from him, which you can use it for the service of humanity. So this regularity and punctuality is the first requ requisite to be with God. Right. Thank you so much. Yeah. So it's the, um, the spiritual or the spiritual studies, the practice, the growth uh, at Brahma Kumaris. We have regular practice and he got that medal. Thank you so much. Um, okay. I'll just read a few from the chart and we'll finish uh, this uh, exercise. Uh, so. Uh, Swetalena uh, says the same thing, create a schedule and take baby steps to follow through it. Then um, Sanem says studying, but revising regularly is great. Making notes, flip charts to stick, uh, some in big letters, uh, draw pictures, graphs helps very much. Agree with enjoying the regular practice makes a big difference. So whatever that can remind you, like the uh, many reminders. Then Lara says, I want to cultivate regularity in everything I already know I have to do. I think what can help is faith in myself, in life, and in God. But it's also a part to be regular, to be motivated, to be keep going. So Kavir says, regularity comes with determination, right? Michael says, regularity create your structure in which you always will always stand up in your feet. Structure. I have to regular for what it uh, vital and important for me. More I take benefit and achievement from my regularity, more I will keep on. Being regular in study allow me to understand better and go deeper in the study. And um, from Harmony House, um, USA, it says uh, like New York, being regular in creating the right thoughts at the right time. Regularity, punctuality, uh, sorry, regularity, punctuality, and accuracy all work together. Regularity, punctuality, and accuracy. And Gita Jumani says you need to have self respect and self and respect others, respect time, yours as well as others to achieve what's important. Great sharings, maybe Deepak Bhai. Let's just see the screen and we'll wrap. Whoever have not shared, also like take it on. Yes, Manoj brother, just in it. Maybe we'll just send them uh, if you don't want to read because time will be. Gone. Yeah, I'll not read all of it, but yeah, so you will all receive it. So beautiful, keep on reflecting and increasing the regularity. Thank you, everyone. And I'll hand it over to Manoj brother. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, so I can see uh, if, uh, let me tell you, our guest speaker today is a very influential speaker, Sister Gopi. So please, if you, we still have 15 more minutes left for her to join. I would really request that if you all have any new participants who want to join, the way she conducts her talk are very, very influential. So if you have any other uh, participants who would want to join in the next few 10, 15 minutes also should be fine because she's an excellent speaker. You'll see that. Okay, so let's move on to what did we do last weekend, Dr. Ashok Mehta and Sister Jenna. So it was a nice chit chat between both of them and Sister Jenna was the interviewer and Dr. Mehta was answering. So now from the slides onwards, which I show, I'll be, to save time, I'll be addressing them as he and she. He, Dr. Mehta, she, Dr. Jenna. So when she asked the questions, sorry, this is just coming in between the... Okay. So she asked, what does regularity mean for him? And how does he see as a part of his life? Because he is still practicing surgeon. So he said regularity is a part of upbringing since his childhood. And he's one of those who's born before the partition in India. 
So uh, he's seen what pre-independence India was like. And then he has, he's also influenced a lot by the Gandhian philosophy. So regularity was a part of our life. And I must say that uh, during that time, technology was not so advanced. So people were more grounded. They had more time to themselves of technology, not really addicted to the technology. And he mentioned that when even when studying in medical college, everything was like being on the clock work, like the clock ticks and then even you are ticking. And as a doctor, I can share, I'm sure there are many doctors in the audience, Gaurav and many others, Neetu, I can see some new faces as well. So we really have to work for 72 hours at a stretch sometimes, yes, indeed. So uh, it's like very stressful, but we enjoy that life. It is, it is, these are those foundation years of the life and regularity starts seeping in that time. The next question she asked was, do you think that uh, you were not regular anymore now? And uh, after having joined Brahma Kumaris, have you become more regular? That's what her question was. So he's been with the Brahma Kumaris for more than 40 years. And to tell you that he's inspired by our very dear Dadi Gulzar. And he was her surgeon for whatever cancer she had and he operated on her and he said that I was really inspired by this patient of mine that I mean absolutely she never had so much of pain so she was he was really inspired by Dadi Kuzar and then the following the disciplines of waking up at 4 a.m and so on it became a part of his life so it continued that's what he said uh, next is, she asked that, what are the patterns of thinking? I think many of you all, I think Brijpal Bhai, sorry, Vijay Bhai said about patterns of thinking. And I really liked it that I need to be regular in my positive thinking, positive, purposeful, powerful, whatever you want to give the name. So what are those patterns of thinking which you should recommend in order to achieve regularity? So he said he was speaking about following some affirmations and some in the sense positive affirmations. And we very fondly call them here at Brahma Kumaris as Swarman, which can also swar means self and man is respect. So practicing those affirmations or those thoughts which elevate my self-respect. Come what may, something negative has happened, but can I convert that? Can I transform that into positive? So that's positive affirmations. And <clears throat> that's what he said that helped him tremendously to improve on or improvise on his regular pattern of positive thinking. And I have already told you about Dadi Gulzar. So what were his thoughts and feelings if he could recall while working with Dadi Gulzar? So he said that he would really, uh, he said two things, spiritual, a lot of spiritual power, Atmik Shakti we say in Hindi, and a lot of clarity. I mean, Dadi was very clear that <clears throat> whatever disease I have, the cancer, so on and so forth is <clears throat> not affecting me. It's the body which is being affected, my body, not me. And as I told you, she never complained about pain at all. So you can imagine having a patient who's so lying still. On the contrary, sometimes you feel, oh, is something wrong going on? Why is she not having any pain? But you know, spiritual power is something which can make you painless. Next question she asked was, what would you say is the cause of us moving from a healthy form of regularity to chaos? And uh, he said, he definitely said it is the smartphones and technology. And even kids of that age, two to three years are sort of so addicted, I still see as a pediatric nephrologist, I mean, my speciality is children. I see so many of such patients who I refer down to my other colleagues who specialize in developmental pediatrics, because I see this very commonly, the ADHD. We call it uh, <clears throat> attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Well, these children are so addicted to the mobiles, they just can't function normally without the mobile. So for their daily routine, as all of us are speaking about routine, routine today, food, having food or doing anything, they want the mobile with them. So I think it's like, uh, it has moved, we have moved away from the healthy form of regularity with these gadgets. That's what he said. 
And also he mentioned about lifestyle changes, which I think as spiritual seekers, the Brahma Kumari regular students, all of you are following those lifestyle changes. And very interestingly, he mentioned, as you can see the picture on the right side, rewiring the brain. This is what we call neuroplasticity, which is uh, everything inside the human brain, the physical human brain is affected by my thinking. And the moment I change my thinking, it definitely starts creating new neural connections between a lot of, we have millions of neurons. Neurons are the functional, uh, the small functional, what we call components of the physical brain. And if I can really create a lot of positivity in my thinking, my hormones also keep changing. And this is a new uh, subject, which has, we call it psycho neuro endocrino immunology. I'm sorry I'm flashing that my internet connection is unstable, but I hope you all are able to gather what I'm saying. So I'll just repeat that word again. <clears throat> psycho neuro endocrino immunology. So psyche means whatever you're thinking affects your neurons, which is the neuroplasticity. That in turn affects your endocrine system. You really get a surge of all good hormones. And we try to teach our medical students as DOSE, D-O-S-E. That's the short form. So dopamine, um, what, ha what happened to, oh yeah, it's uh, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. So these are the good hormones, the feel good factor hormones, which help you uh, when you start thinking positive. And finally, last is immunology. So if your immune system starts functioning well because of your positive thinking and your changing of the neurons and the neuronal wiring, it really makes you infection free. And I think that was one reason which I can now retrospectively say that Dadi Gulzar came out like that from the big surgery. The next question she asked was, for people who have joined late when I'm saying she, it means Sister Jenna and he means Dr. Mehta. So please try to understand the context. So she asked that did anything change when the energy of the divine became a regular machine ways and he is born i think in 1937 so he said that ayurveda the traditional science of medicine of india and yoga and all these ashtang yoga the eight yoga what we call in raj yoga there are eight uh, tenets to it so all that he knew about that but you know uh, in india when we had a lot of ayurveda being practiced people know in, in ayurveda the concept of the soul I must say, as allopathy doctors, we still don't know. We still try to figure it out or hunt it out in the form of consciousness, etc., etc. We still don't know in, in allopathy, in what we call the Western medicine. But Ayurveda has that, and the soul operates, he also mentioned, through seven chakras. Chakra, chakra means something which is moving inside. It's something not... to some organ system in the body and uh, it is if you want to go on a deeper level uh, I cover that quite a few times in one in my few talks of seven color meditation we can do that sometime later for y'all in that what we say is that each uh, there are seven core qualities of the soul energy I'm sure as Brahma Kumari students you all know that so these seven chakras each chakra is related to that each quality of the soul so just to give you an example, we have the Ajna Chakra, the Soul Chakra we call, that is related directly to the <clears throat> value of knowledge. Just to give an example. So that's what he mentioned in that question, what was asked. Coming to next question, which she asked, what steps do you take to change the patterns of your thinking? And he just said one thing, move from expectations to acceptance. Because as I said, he was inspired by the Adi Gulzar so much. He saw that she's so unique as a person, tolerate 100, 110 or maybe 200 percent tolerance power, absolutely no pain. And then he said it will bring a qualitative change in your life, which can happen through meditation. The next question is, as an accomplished surgeon, I covered it in the last slide. 
what is your understanding of the soul? Because as I told you in our allopathic modern medicine, which we study in India as well, because of the British influence we had, and still having it, do you know what is the soul? And he said that uh, he never knew that, but having been into Brahma Kumaris, who am I? That's the most important question, which is answered on day one. And I must say, that is the unique selling point of Brahma Kumari's Rajoga meditation, because all over the world, people try to figure out this question to this answer, who am I? And here, bang, on day one, you know who are you. And not only that, but also the three faculties with all the details. I must say, even a five-year-old child can tell you what is the mind, what is the intellect, what is the sanskars, or we call resolves or personality, the detailed explanations. So that was his answer for this. And regarding the Supreme Soul, uh, what is our connection with the Supreme Soul? She asked her, and he said that he loves that connection. When he sits in meditation and deep silence, he gets a feeling of positivity and quietness. And it's an internal feeling which generates and he feels very elevated like an angel. And she also asked him that as doctors, we all see a lot of birth and death, particularly cancer patients. He specializes in surgical oncology. Have you had any experience of knowing that the soul is leaving the body? So it's, it's not like something physical that you see the soul is leaving. But he said that I know someone who could remember his past birth. <clears throat> and he would point out to the house where he lived, so on and so forth. We know these stories, uh, what we call as NDEs, near-death experiences, or OBEs, out-of-body experiences. So he knew that, I mean, as from his culture where he was, he belongs to a Jain culture. And he had, he, he knows people who have had such experiences. And we all of us know now that in the entire BK literature, which the Supreme Soul, who is who creates the syllabus, the Supreme Soul, I must say, is the syllabus director of the entire course literature we have here. And he teaches us on a daily basis that consider yourself, my dear child, to be a soul and see yourself entering the body and leaving the body in the sense, not the physical scene, but experience that bodiless state, that Right at this moment, you're doing your work. Suddenly you get detached, go out of the body, feel that out of the body, bodiless experience. Energy, empower yourself for the next few minutes and then come back into the body. So this is what he mentioned there as well. And let me see how am I doing on my time? Yeah, I have five more minutes. So a few things he mentioned, virtues of patience, perseverance, and discipline. And this will all come to you uh, in the review materials. I'll just quickly come to some few quotes which they said. So Dr. Mehta's quote was, develop regular habits and nurture your physical well-being, as well as build a conducive environment for a spiritual role. Okay, so a few questions which I had to ask them because a lot was mentioned about Murli's Murli. So let me just take that, the last question first. But please elaborate on what the Murli is and isn't meditation enough? So this question, Sister Jaina was asked by me that someone asked that, what is this Murli? And do I really need to listen to Murli is the spiritual class which we have daily at the BK Center? So do I really need to listen to that? Isn't meditation enough? So she explained it beautifully, that if you plant a seed, but you don't water it or give it adequate sunlight, it won't really germinate and grow. So same way, planting a seed through meditation is, is fine, that I am a peaceful soul, that's perfectly fine. But to nurture that thought, I need to really offer it the sunlight, which is we call it the sun of knowledge, the supreme being, the daily teachings, and water it with the smriti. Smriti means the awareness. Let us have this constant awareness through our teachings, which is important to help us sustain our spiritual growth. And all of us who regularly listen to the spiritual class do agree that this murli, what we call, is abundant. I must not say positive. Positive is too small a word. It is really 
empowering thoughts which we get. It's a lot of positive guidance on how to upgrade yourself. You know, we are in an uh, age where everything needs to be upgraded or updated, your phone on a regular basis, so on and so forth. So why don't we upgrade ourselves, our, our thought pattern? And this regular system at the Brahma Kumaris, I must say, is so fantastic. I was actually amazed because the same spiritual class happens all over the world. It's amazing. And it's the same matter, the four pages, Murli, what we call, is circulate in different languages, not only in, in India. There are so many languages in India. All over the world, the Europe, all those European languages as well. The same content is being read and you know the time zone differences. So at any point of the time in the day, everywhere, in anywhere in the world, that spiritual class is happening. And the regular BK students who practice that are connecting by meditation at every hour all over the world in the world clock. So you can imagine it's like the entire atmosphere in the world is being sustained by the Supreme Being through these murlis. So we can't afford to miss them and we have to be regular in them. I think I will just stop sharing here. And I hope Sister Gopi is with us. Is she around? Um, um, I am not seeing her, actually. Fine. So, Let me just see. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, yeah, just give a call. I had called her. She will be there. Maybe she's joining. Yeah, okay. So in the meantime, let me just cover the two questions and I'll take maybe we are will be a bit late if she joins a bit late. Just keep a track of her. I'll finish these two questions as well. They're very interesting. I must say you all need to know what they said. Okay, next question. Oops. Uh, so yes, someone spoke about uh, it's very difficult for me in these chilly cold winters to get up early in the morning and conduct. Can I? This was asked to Sister Jayanti also when we covered uh, a few weeks ago that instead of 4 a.m., can I just do it at 5 a.m.? So, uh, Sister Jenna had a beautiful answer that don't force yourself. And I think Sister Jayanti said, you need to know what's the benefit of getting up at that point of time. If you know the benefit, you'll immediately leave the bed. And I think Brijmohan Bhai Sahib, a very dear brother, the Secretary General of, uh, the additional Secretary General of Brahma Kumaris, he beautifully gives this, I love this example. He says that even if you're on an, in an ICU, on an ICU bed, and someone with all the tubes and uh, oxygen going on, and someone will come and tell you, oh, there's a big black snake beneath the ICU bed. What will you do? <laughs> will you just not get up? You will just get up. So same thing he said on a funnier note, though, he said that in the morning at 4 a.m., create this thought that this uh, bed beneath this, there is, it is what we call kato ki shaya. It is uh, the bed of thorns. I, am, I can't sleep on this bed anymore. And the moment you realize that, you'll just wake up. So uh, find out that me time, each to his own, whatever. But once I understand the importance of this confluence age, this is a concept which is told to us by the Supreme Being that the age which we are passing through, tumultuous times, a lot of things happening and happening suddenly, unprecedented, out of the blue things happen. It's the confluence, the speciality of the confluence age because it's going to change from the Iron Age to the Golden Age. Uh, sorry, uh, just to confirm, is she there? <laughs> no, not yet. Oh, okay. So then... Um, oh, yeah, she's know. there. <laughs> yeah, you are. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. she joined but, now, maybe. maybe. I should not be doing your role. I'll just stop sharing the screen. I, because since you were not there, so I thought I'll just go on and on. Right. So before I give it to you, thank you, Sister Gopi, for joining. I'm sure you're joining from Madhuban, the Pandavan complex. Right, and uh, Sister Gopi is not new for us, but as always, let me just speak a few words about her and a poem as always. Yes, so Sister Gopi was being, I mean, she's a Lokic advocate by profession, if I'm not mistaken, and she has been with the Brahma Kumaris for ages now. Let's not count the years, since 1979. And 
all of you also know her that um, she is very well uh, oversees the growth of the international youth forum the iif and that is also since almost 30 years now since the early 90s and she's got this beautiful blend of eastern and western her hindi is fantastic so is the british english as well and uh, as always the poem on her and regularity so sister gopi has had a lockic career in law which was very curricular but her spiritual alokic career is indeed marvelously extra curricular that's because she's been a meditator who's very very regular and who's also one of the best speakers who's indeed very articulate you'll experience that today i told you regularity she told me it's a very uh, unique value but there you are we'll see what she has to say going on from articulate her churning of knowledge is indeed very spectacular hence among the youth and the iif she is indeed very popular today she shall highlight on how not to become irregular so that we open the third eye and become extra ocular develop this practice of soul consciousness which is indeed very peculiar taught only at the brahma kumaris which helps us to be miles away from maya ravan the predator and with the supreme beside me always i can become the spiritual senator and win over maya by being the powerful wrestler and she shall teach us how to develop this moral muscle thanks once again to you for your company and it's all yours thank you for you thank you manoj bhai your your mind is is wonderfully creative <laughs> um and i do have to make a small correction i have studied law but i have never practiced law baba took me before i entered that field even though a lot of some of the yagya service that i've been involved in has used those skills so nothing ever gets wasted but um i i guess when i was reflecting on this topic um i i i i i thought about my own context and how maybe to some people my life may appear irregular because sometimes i'm i'm in one country for a few days then another country for a few days then another place for a few days and um i'm more used to living out of a suitcase um and living in the air than living on the ground <laughs> so um and yet despite all of that you know there is a regularity of morning meditation amrit vela there's a regularity of the morning spiritual study which i think is a is a very important anchor um there's a regularity around food it's and it's it's like your inbuilt body clock you know you will eat you will sleep um you will have meditation you will study and i think you know in raj yoga a very beautiful routine has been created for us based on the four pillars um knowledge yoga dharna and service and i always feel like in this life it is a life of service and to truly become fully serviceable i remember many years ago being in front of avyak baba and baba talked about four types of service and i thought if i can incorporate this into my timetable then i can become fully serviceable and the first was self service the foundation of service which is what am i doing for my own self progress and and what am i doing regularly for my self progress because you can't progress if you don't 
um, put into place certain um, activities. Now, I'll give you an example. The beauty is that we study every day. I study every day, but what I study every day is different. So I may study every day at the same time, 6.30 in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, but the content of what I'm studying is different every day. So there's always a newness that I'm looking forward to, despite being regular in my studies. I'm regular for my morning meditation, and yet the content of my morning meditations every day is so different. And I look forward to the 4 a.m. morning meditation that's like an anchor in my life. And yet the content and the experience during that time is so new. So sometimes when people talk about, well, regularity being boring, it's because um, you may have fixed the time to do something, but in what you're doing at that particular time, there might not be newness. And I think after a period of time, just repeating the same action again and again can be a bit boring. So I find that the, you know, the subject of regularity is important when it comes to fixing, it, well, it has a deep connection with time. So it, it's important when it comes to fixing certain principles in your life that I, I need to meditate every day. Now, what I do in those meditations is up to me. I need to nourish my mind with some spiritual food every day. I need to allocate some time to meet people, talk to people every day. And I can choose who I want to talk to and where I want to be. Um, so I think so much is in our own hands um, to self-generate. So self-progress is a form of, of service, self-service. And then the second one is um, service of the world. And this is serving through your connections, relations, the people in your life. So do you make time in your daily timetable to connect with souls you may have not have spoken to for a while, um, to reach out, make new connections? So it's important to fix a time for that because it's not just going to happen by itself. Um, sometimes you may think about someone, well, pick up the phone and, and speak, find a time to chat, because you don't know how, a, where a spiritual conversation is going to go. And it, it's quite important that, you know, when a thought arises in our head, and I'm talking about a real thought, not just the kind of general, um, if you like, um, the general repetition of noise that's going on in our heads when we're ruminating, for example. That's not thinking. Real thought is, is original thought. It's, it's pure, it's benevolent, um, it's maybe a touching, um, it's creative, it has something in it, opens the door to possibilities. So sometimes when a thought enters your head, um, maybe the time has come to open a door to that connection or that relationship. Because thoughts and time are deeply connected. So serving the world, you know, serving through your relations, connections, your communities, your societies. And then the third form is, is serving the yagya. And we're not talking about the organization of the Brahma Kumaris. We're talking about the the spirit that binds us together as a spiritual family. How am I contributing to increasing that spirit? So, you know, it does mean serving through body, mind, and wealth, because the yagi is a flame. It's a spiritual flame of each one's connection with the Supreme that binds us together. And so, you know, okay, one part of serving the yagya may be helping out with cleaning, washing, dishing. Yeah, fine. Lots of people do social service in different volunteer organizations. Another part is serving with your wealth, but serving with your mind, 
which is the fourth form of service, is really knowing that, well, when I say serving the yogi also, it's, it's both are connected because, you know, we're here to help each other go up. So if I generate resistance or a negative thought for somebody because I don't like what they've done, that energy will reach them and create a barrier to them going up. And the direct karmic return of that is I won't be able to go up. I won't be able to elevate. And so inevitably, in, as we harbor dislikes or, you know, um, I know the Hindi word, I'm trying to look for the English. Um, I think when we go against somebody, you know, in our attitude, it's so easy to make somebody an enemy. And I, I always think to myself, it's really important not to make any enemies, make friends. And, and, and to really know that really saying no to any form of waste or negative thought in my mind is a form of service because I'm not creating roadblocks for myself and for anybody else. And then the fourth subject that was outlined was Mansa Seva, serving through the mind, which is really spending time in, in connecting, in, in considering oneself to be a soul without nothing, without anything. Body, nothing belongs to you. Creating a state of liberation first inside and then being with God. Because when you sit with God in that state of freedom and liberation, then your vibes go very, very far. And they go to places that you can't imagine. You know, somebody will be on the other side of the planet and suddenly they'll feel hope and they don't know where it's coming from. And they don't need to know, and you don't need to know where it goes. But because you, you, you renounce your limitations and you sit in a state of liberation, nothing belongs to me. And that allows you to stay altruistic in your connection with God. That bond, oh my goodness me, that bond of love can do miracles. So that also needs a time because, you know, I remember in the early days of especially starting service in, in Oxford. Daddy Jenki would often tell us, you know, it's important you take time in the afternoon, four o'clock to 4.30, quarter to five, and really any new students that come serve through the mind, give good wishes, give good vibrations, and that will support your new students that are coming to the center every day. So, when I think of a life of service, then it's easy to become regular in things. But if your life, you don't understand the ethos of service and, and that you're valuable and that everything you do is valuable, then it's almost like a compartmentalized life. You know, well, I do this and service is something else and I have to get on with the rest of my life and I'm not interested in the rest of my life. And actually, it, it, serving is so much deeper than just the act itself. It's what you're bringing as a state of being into everything you do. Now, the subject of regularity, I mean, you know, there were three words I was playing with, consistency, uniformity, and regularity. Consistency often is you know, kind of sometimes related to character, consistency in behaviors. Um, consistency implies firmness and also harmony of conduct, you know? There's a sense of harmony with consistency. Now, here we are, a load of people walking in the same direction, each one consistent in their own activity, and yet we're harmonized because we're moving in the same direction. But uniformity means sameness we're doing the same thing at the same time in the same place and sometimes uniformity um you know it's, it's like uniformity to rules uniformity uh, that, that that there's no variety there's no sense of harmony in uniformity it's just everything's the same 
But regularity is is so much about, I think, as I as I understand it from a spiritual perspective, it's about my relationship with time, time, thought, and action. And, and my principles. Now, you know, to have a reg, to have, to do something at a regular time every day is so important for children, for example. You know, we, we train children to wake up, go to the potty at this time, eat at this time, study at this time, because it provides a rhythm and it provides emotional security. That's a given and that's very important for a child to grow up with those anchors because when they grow up with that kind of security, they can open up more. And that's important for children. And I suppose as we become adults, um, and especially in a world where things are becoming more and more unstable, adaptation is important. Adjustment is important. Um, now, it doesn't mean that, you know, I adjust what gives me life. So, for example, you know, yes, Amrit Vail is what gives me life. Uh, the Murali, the study gives me life. My evening meditation gives me life. And these things are so important. They're as important as eating and sleeping. So becoming a good regular student keeps me healthy, mentally healthy. And actually, because it's a spiritual lifestyle, that I'm becoming regular in. It's not a physical lifestyle I'm becoming regular in. It's a spiritual lifestyle. Like a physical lifestyle, to, you become regular. Go to the gym at this time. Go to work out at this time. Go to play tennis at this time. And what tends to happen is your mind adjusts to the regularity of fixing a time around matter. So it's like a fix. It's, it's almost like a ritual. And you can do that thing, like going to the temple at a fixed time every day or playing tennis at a fixed time. And then it becomes like a drug at a physical level, a physical lifestyle. And it becomes monotonous too, because there's not much change happening, right? So it's, it's, it, for me, it's less about that and more about sustaining the spiritual regularity in my spiritual lifestyle, which is the meditation and the study so my mind is always engaged in something more elevated in its regularity, which allows me to handle irregularities in matter and in the changes in our physical world. So I suppose the question is, you know, what are you being regular in? Um, and sometimes, you know, some people addicted to everyday gym, everyday tennis, everyday this, everyday that. And if that's taken away from them, you know, the body, they feel they can't cope. And yet at some point, we have to live without certain things in our life. You know, I used to, I do this a lot, actually, with, with tea. <laughs> you, see, you know, you wake up in the morning, you have your meditation, you really like a nice cup of tea. And then it kind of becomes like a cup of tea and then you read something and so from time to time I'll just stop drinking tea so I'll drink something else I'll be regular in what I drink but maybe it won't be a cup of tea it might be something else like a herb tea I'll change it so I don't become addicted to something where if I don't have that thing at that time that particular thing at that time then my body feels like I'm losing something. So, you know, there's a, there's plus and minus sides to these qualities because when they're spiritually exercised, they create stability. Um, they create steadiness, steadfastness. 
they create reliability, trustworthiness. But then when they're when the focus of these qualities is just purely physical, then you become rigid and fixed and addicted and and you know quite you know you, you're quite individual in the way you want to live your life you're very specific this is how I want to live my life and and that clashes with being a server <laughs> because a server is always available <laughs> and so there's something about our our regularity what we're being regular in is it keeping my mind flexible is it keeping my mind open is it keeping my mind available is it keeping my mind easy and light because when that happens and that timetable or whatever I'm regular in is keeping my mind easy and light, then guess what? I don't need a clock in life. You know, things happen naturally. You know, you don't need to, the baby doesn't need a clock to know when it's going to be born or, you know, you know. Seasons know when they come and go. Nature doesn't need a clock to know when something has to grow, something has to die. It just, it's, it's natural. We kind of enter into a natural rhythm of life and we can live more naturally and we can adjust to anomalies. So that's a really important thing um, to, to bear. In Bhakti, there's the story of Arjuna, you know, who the best archers in Indian mythology. And there's a particular story where they were staying with their guru, Dronacharya, and there was no lights at some point, and he found himself eating in the dark. And he thought, oh, well, I'm eating in the dark. I can't see my hand. I can't see the food, and yet I'm still eating. So he thought, why can't I practice in the dark? And it was that practice in the dark that eventually made him the best archer. And it was a regular practice in the art, in the dark. So there's something about regularity of a particular practice that makes it natural for us. Like what he was doing was eating in the dark. Now, it's natural to eat. And he was thinking, well, can I apply this to shooting in the dark? Now, with any activity that you practice over a period of time, at a fixed time, um, you will build a capacity in that. And that's what eventually leads you to success in that field. Um, because so much about being regular is building the hours because it is the hours of practice. You cannot bypass hours of practice with trying to overanalyze and understand your way out of something. Because you have to build muscle, you have to build, you know, be it intellectual muscle, mental muscle, physical muscle. You have to build the capacity um, to be able to do something. I remember, um, where was I? Yes, I remember being in Hyderabad in India quite a few years ago, maybe about 10 or 12 years ago. And one of the things, I had gone to see um, a close contact of the BKs who owns a very famous sports academy right next door to Shanti Sarova, the retreat center, the BK retreat center. And um, it was interesting. His name is Palele Gopichand. And uh, he's trained. He was the coach of Samia Mirza, who's famous badminton player. And he was telling me something quite interesting. He said, in my day of learning how to play tennis, if the coach told us to do run 10 laps, we never questioned him because we trusted the coach knows we need to build this capacity in our legs to be able to run around the court. So we ran 10 laps. He says, now, if you ask the young generation to, to run 10 laps, the first question they have is why? And he said, I spend more time making PowerPoint and print that actually doing the training itself. It's a hilarious example because it's so true. I think there's a, a huge 
lack of energy at this point in time with the next generation <laughs> where when there isn't power and strength you default back to why why this why that why that and even if you get a why it still isn't enough motivation to do that thing because sometimes you get the motivation just by doing it and benefiting from it rather than sitting fence asking a hundred thousand thinking until I'm convinced I won't do anything. Well, actually, sometimes it's when you just start doing it that the energy comes, the energy flows. So definitely regularity has its plus points when you just consistently do it and you see the benefits of it. And the benefits make you do more, inspire you to do more. So um, where am I with all this now? You know, the, the, there was a, there's something about the, I want to just explore that a little bit more. As I said earlier, what I'm being regular in will define the state of mind I live in. You know, my temperament, my mood, my, my whole sense of openness inside. And um, it, it helps if what I'm being regular in is spiritually benevolent, then it helps to create a connected mind, an easygoing mind, and a very lovely temperament in life. Which, you know, sometimes the word regular can be used for so many behaviors. You know, they regularly quarrel with each other. They regularly fight with each other. Um, he regularly shows up for this event. So it's so physically, um, you know, it, it has negative connotations sometimes, this word. It's just a, you know, it, it's just the act of something that happens at the same time every day or a similar behavior pattern that happens. But I think when we think of the regularity of features, for example, so regularity of features is something that's organized in an even and balanced way to create, you know, it's, it's arranged in a balanced and even way that creates a sense of harmony. So if I was to think of regularity like that in my life, then the question for me is how do I arrange my life in a way that creates a sense of evenness and balance? Um, so that I can enjoy um, an easier, happier, more blissful life. Rather than be fixated, thinking if I do this every day, I'll be it, because that's not what this is about. It, there's a deeper intelligence that we need to tap into that allows us to become regular in some aspects to help us stay balanced. You know, so when I talked about the four types of service earlier, if you can find a time to do things in your day, then all of these are balanced. So yoga, mind, you're exercising all aspects of your being in an even and balanced way, so creating regularity in your being, which leads to a much more balanced personality. So, um, you know, we have lots of different parts in our life. I think as human beings, we, especially now with, with so much available online and everybody's looking for the diet, the food, 
the miracle cure, the this. And the reality of life is it doesn't work like that. Every small thing we get fixated on is just a small part of the big whole. And achieving a form of harmony and stability has a lot to do with balancing different parts in right in the right measure. You know, so being regular with important parts that make things work. We know that just even for the physical body, it needs night sleep for the body to repair itself. So being regular in your sleep helps the body um, to repair itself and rest and, you know, give you energy the next day. We know that there are certain times of the day where the stomach needs food. I mean, you know that the Chinese body clock, for example, the hours between seven and nine are the intestine. And, and so eating a good breakfast at that time of day is very good. And most people eat breakfast during that time of day. So, you know, these kind of things where we put into our, I suppose, our routine, our way of life, the right things at the right time. Um, it helps the body. But the soul? What am I regularly doing to help the soul? <laughs> That's a lot of things people miss out on. Because people want to feel good in their body. But if something in their body is threatened and that thing is not available and you can't do it anymore, then, you know, mentally, there isn't any flexibility. So I'm just reading a beautiful chat that's just come through, actually. Um, my daughter is on the autistic spectrum. I work with people on the autistic spectrum. They've taught me that they need routine, regularity, reliability to feel safe and to be able to trust. When unstructured and inclusive change is thrust on them, they often have a meltdown. Staff label them with challenging behavior. There is very little curiosity of how we have caused the triggers of anxiety for the vulnerable person. Yes, that's a very lovely comment. Um, and I do agree, especially with individuals that are um, compromised to a certain extent at a mental level. Um, and like I said earlier, with children, these are aspects at a physical level that create safety and structure. But of course, a lot of what we're experiencing um, in our lives, you know, I've noticed with children, I've worked a lot with young people, so many years of 27 years, and I've noticed that they respond not to what I say, but to who I am. And, you know, working with young ones from 10 right up until, you know, late 40s, but the younger they are, they don't respond to my words, they respond to my presence. And I notice that if I am in a resistant state inside, even though what I'm saying is right, that they can't hear it. And they play up because they're, they're feeling what I'm feeling. And so for me, so much of creating a sense of safety for someone is making sure that I'm clean inside. Because cleanliness, um, a state of a clean attitude, a non-judgmental attitude, is what enables somebody to feel safe and with the universe you know to flow through me to allow divine love to flow through me to reach someone so my question is the thing is is that i'm trying to differentiate between the physical and the spiritual here you know what children especially and young people need to see is a consistency and a regularity in our behaviors because that's what makes them feel safe with us okay they know this person is never going to shout at them they know this person is not going to, okay, I can open up and be honest. So because most, most kids growing up copy, 
they copy behaviors. So, and they're, they're responding to a deeper dissonance because it's very loud. For them. So here we are, you know, as an individual, I might want to create a perfect lifestyle, but if I haven't sorted out subtle negativity that's lying in my heart, it's lying in my attitude, or mindsets that are controlling um, or critical, then all of these vibrational frequencies um, create a rigidity around regularity, which, is, which then regularity can become a form of control rather than it being safe. So, so much, I think for us as individuals, general human beings, we build a lifestyle just predominantly to create a good feeling in our bodies. But what am I doing regularly in my life that's creating a deeply good feeling in the soul? That's waking up the joy in the soul, that's waking up the peace in the soul. Because you know what? For any person, including children of any kind, um, it's those vibrations that ultimately create a sense of belonging. So I, I, I do understand and value hugely, um, you know, my own natural body rhythm, wake up at a regular time, study to rig, because it creates safety. And it creates emotional security, I'll say. And your body gets used to doing something so your mind can open. But those are basic things that we regular in. I mean, you don't mess with the basics of your life. You don't mess with your sleep. You don't mess with your food and diet. You might skip a meal, no problem. Um, you know, you don't mess around with basics of physical needs that needs regularly for this body to function and support you. But that's not where life, you know, it, it's, that's not the whole of life. Life has a different dimension. We are here for a higher purpose. And if we do not connect with that higher purpose and do not reconcile with our own selves and make friends with ourselves, you know, we run the risk um, of because we don't feel fully in control of ourselves, we try and control our environment. We try and control our habits. We try and control external things around us. So I think for me, it's, it's really about what do I need to do? What, what's going to help me regularly nourish the soul to be able to create uh, and cultivate a connected mindset, stable mind, an open mind, an easy mind, a peaceful mind. And um, what helps me build a spiritual rhythm? Because a clear mind, the quality of that kind of spiritual rhythm that gets created in my life, you, you, it's easy to be on your journey without bumping up against yourself. Um, because you see what is unfolding in front of you. But, you know, I've noticed in my own life that if, if I, for example, you know, I, I, I think of serving as something that is only done for a certain period of time, and then the rest of the time I just get on with my life and looking after my body, I find that I lose a momentum, I lose clarity. But when I really have accepted, I am a server. And I've got to look after myself in a way that allows my vibrations to reach far and wide. And so that no human soul experiences difficulty because I've sent something out that's not clean. Of course, every person has their own difficult issues to deal with. And most people, generally all of us, when we have react reactions to things or people, 
we are dealing with triggers inside that we have not faced. So, you know, I'm not responsible for your trigger. I mean, I'm not responsible for your reaction. I might be a trigger for your reaction, but I'm not responsible for your reaction. And I feel that the more we develop a spiritual lifestyle and put into place um, creative meditations regularly, creative spiritual study, learning and elevate, really look after our minds like a baby and like a child, um, then I, I really feel that things happen very naturally. You live in a state of trust when you spiritually nourish yourself, which is our original state. I mean, we were born into this world in a sense of trust. I have yet to come across a small baby that is insecure when it is born or has a thought, oh, I'm so little, who's going to look after me? And yet this soul is, is born in a, such a tiny little body is that it's most vulnerable and yet um, And yet, is, is like a master in the house. <laughs> because it's, uh, it just lives in a straight of trust. It, it knows how to draw love from its parents. So we're born like that. And at some point in our life, we forget that. And we become so self-conscious. Where so much of our self-respect is defined by how other people see us and to fit in, that we lose living in a state of trust. And then for many, many years, you can spend decades trying to fit into the world, fit into society, please everybody, do what the right thing is, and still feel a million miles away from yourself. And then one day you wake up and think, I may need to meditate. <laughs> so, for me, it's about cultivating that parallel, which unfortunately in our world today is just not taught, is, is a parallel education on our spiritual um, way of being um, that complements our physical learning as well. So I'm going to stop there because I think I've rambled on enough. And just wondering if. Um, Anything you'd like to share? So, uh, thank you so much. It was beautiful. And uh, I would like boil down to two things which you said, regularity with a lot of rhythm, and it should be a natural process of your being. You don't need to be so stressed if something irregular happens, but that's beautiful what you said. Okay, there's a question, a couple of questions we'll take. We have some time today. Uh, mm -hmm. The first question is about, uh, I get upset with people's irregularities. So how do I deal with irregular people? Come and live in India. <laughs> <laughs> you know how, <laughs> you know what gets dismantled? I've, okay, I was born outside India grown quite between the West and India. But, you know, I've adopted an Anglo-Saxon mindset, which really values time. Okay, if somebody gives you a time, 10 o'clock, you're there two minutes before 10. And because, you know, that's the etiquette in society. And you don't realize how unconsciously you, you adopt that. And then you arrive 10 o'clock and um, somebody else then just, you know, oh, I forgot, was there a meeting? Oh yeah, I'm coming, yeah, yeah, oh, 10 minutes, five minutes. And then they roll up 10 minutes later. And in that moment, you can feel, oh, my time's being wasted. This is, in... but you have a choice. You either wait peacefully or you have all these waste thoughts about yourself and your time being wasted. And, and I think this is where, our relationship with time and thoughts is important because 
when something doesn't happen at the time you want it to happen, then your thoughts will tell you what rubbish is still left inside the soul. And so, you know, it's not so much about the irregular behavior of others. Of course, we learn ways to handle this where, you know, we can gently tell people, um, is it possible that the next time we start a meeting or give them a reminder before or, you know, find ways of handling it um, to minimize these incidences. But at the end of the day, um, if my relationship with time is rigid, I'm going to have serious problems. <laughs> Somebody just shared very beautifully, IST stands for Indian Stretchable Time. <laughs> <laughs> it's really there's always time here in India so you know it, it happened to me today I'd given somebody 11 o'clock and, and they saw me at 11 o'clock so I'm, I'm just here I'm just here and they disappeared off somewhere for 10 minutes and um, I just sat down very peacefully and uh, I was very pleased that I, I wasn't reactive and I just filled those 10 minutes with something productive and so I think I think sometimes a lot of our reactions is because we've lost trust in, 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 in the natural, I wasn't natural, there's a, there's a mechanism and there's a very accurate balancing mechanism in the drama. And we've lost touch with that. We've lost touch with the naturalness of ourselves, the naturalness of other people and the naturalness of time. And so, you know, I think something at the level of the thoughts has to be looked at. Where, why am I reacting so much? So what is my relationship with time like? Maybe just be curious about that and see where you go with it. Great, and we'll take one last question. Uh in the interest of time. Yeah, you have a lot of stories always about Dadi Janki. So do mm -hmm. you want to relate to one of the stories related to regularity? Anything you remember mm -hmm. of that? With her? You know, she's, oh my goodness me. She was incredible, actually. She had an amazing timetable. Of course, she would be up every morning by four o'clock, quarter to four, she'd be up four o'clock. And then she would, in those days, early days when she'd come to class, she'd be there for time in the morning. And then her, her, she'd go for a walk after class every day, especially when the doctor said to her, she has to walk for the body. Remember, she came to the UK when she was 61. So, um, you know, and she did have bodily issues. But then she would have breakfast around 10 o'clock-ish, lunch around 2, 2.30 sometimes quarter to three and she had resting and then dinner was about eight eight fifteen like that and she always seemed to make it on time for all of those things and then before she went to bed she would always go to Baba's room and that for me was one of the most important pieces she understood her body very well and what it needed and she gave her body what it needed she didn't indulge, but she gave her body what it needed. That's why she, it supported her to 104. But one of the practices that she was hugely regular in that I admired a lot was um, it didn't matter what time she finished in the evening, sometimes 10.30 meeting people, she would always walk to Baba's room and spend some time with Baba. And in that time she spent with Baba, five, seven minutes, sometimes, sometimes 10 minutes, she would take Drishti from Baba and she would just become a child. It was like she would just disengage from everything in the day, hand over everything to the supreme parent and just completely relax. And she would go to bed like a little child. And I think this, how she protected herself before going to bed 
was the secret of her staying above things. I think a lot of people today are careless about how they go to bed. And I noticed that one of the secrets for her state of mind and her stability, stable state of mind, is that really every night she became that child, that instrument. She just disengaged. You know how Baba's loving drishti would just penetrate her and just release her from everything in the day. And that, for me, has been a very important piece in my Brahmin life. Because it doesn't matter what I've had to face in the day and how many traffic controls I may have had, but you still have to face unpleasant things sometimes. But at night, because I take 15, 20 minutes with Baba in the evenings, everything gets taken away. It's like, it's like um, nothing has happened. Yeah. It's like nothing has happened. Okay. Thank you for, I think, disabling the auto rotate because I think you had gone oblique. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. And I request, we are seniors, are apologetic. Dr. Mehta had something else and Sister Claudia also. So I'll request Sister Anu to please propose the vote of thanks. Over to you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Manoj Bhai. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, Sister Claudia also cannot join for some, uh, yeah, her personal uh, responsibilities. Um, so, yeah, on behalf of everyone who's listening today, I want to thank uh, Gopi Ben. It's so beautiful for so many layers and different aspects you shared. And I think what uh, stayed with me is that um, uh, being regular in keeping my mind available, easy, and light, so that I don't need a clock. Everything I'll do will be natural, and I can adjust with everything in life, he said. So that's what, where the connection of meditation and thoughts, everything then comes uh, in the practice. But yeah, I think uh, keeping in mind to keep it like easy, accept, and not go into negative or any waste thoughts. That was beautiful. Um, I'm sure we all will uh, really revisit at the talk and take points and bring to practice. So thank you so much. And uh, yes, over to you, Manoj Bhai. And yeah, at the okay. end, we'll have the meditation. Yeah. So in the meantime, I'm, I'll do the announcements. And if you just want to quickly, if people want to have a quick photograph with Sister Gopi as a memory, you can just keep your videos on it, sister, and you can just... Okay, but in the meantime, I'll be sharing the screen. We'll do that later after I finish the announcements. I'll do it quickly. Yeah, so as we always wind up the value with a silence retreat on that for two hours, and this is particularly, uh, I must say, on the, on the teachings of... You're listening to Baba, Baba, these words, you're familiar. There are quite a few uh, new people as well. So it's on the basis of the teachings, what we call the spiritual class, the Murli... Avyakt Murli is based on that. We have this silence retreat once a month. This is the Avyakt month. So we had two silence retreats. The two values we covered, the first was stability and the second one is regularity. So this is happening in next 12 hours from now. So for India, it's morning 9 to 11 and West Coast is 7.30 to 9.30. And as we move on to the next month, we have chosen two other values. The first being maturity. And very closely related to maturity is adjustment. A person who is mature will always be able to adjust. So the first one, episode 83, maturity, happening on 3rd February. We have a very dear sister, Dr. Kala Ayengar. She was, she's the director of the Peace Village Retreat Center in New York. And as always, a week after will be the workshop. And we have with her sister, Sharona. Currently, I spoke to her yesterday. She is still in Gyan Sarovar, though she is the coordinator from Brahma Kumaris in Israel. And since last six months, she is in Gyan Sarovar for reasons you all know very well. So she'll be there with us for the workshop. And uh, this is our elegant calendar of the next month, February. We'll send it to you in emails as well and also on the WhatsApp group, which we have. 
So I'll just stop sharing the screen. These are our uh, emails and uh, websites. You can feel free to give us your feedback, visit the websites and also all these episodes and the workshops are recorded. So you can find them on YouTube. These are the links, omshanti.tk forward slash workshops and the playlist forward slash, forward slash English is for the episodes of the Values for Life series. So I'll just stop sharing. We'll take a quick photograph with all your videos on and uh, then we'll go in the meditation mode with Sister. We make this moment memorable with Sister Gopis, everyone. Um, that they're opening cell, they need. And so in the meantime, um, do you want, it will be a drishti or a commentary, whatever suits you. Um, you know what? I'm by the Tower of Peace. So I'm going to show you the Tower of Peace. Give me a second. Sure, and sure. we'll have a meditation by the Tower of Peace. It's very beautiful. Great. Hold on. Yeah. So there you are, we have a bonus, all of us through our minds going to the Tower of Peace in this beautiful Avyakt month. <laughs> That's perfect. Come to the Tower of Peace, this place is one of the holiest, most silent places on earth. It is the resting place of our founder, Brahma Baba. So just take these few moments to allow your mind to relax. Become present in this moment now. And tune in to the silence of this holy place. Come to Mother Bun. Silence is healing. Silence is a balm for the soul. And deep silence brings the power of great transformation. And in silence, we stay close to God. And we experience the safety 
of his eternal companionship. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So wonderful. Thank you so much, Sister Gopi, for even this beautiful feeling which we are you're, you're leaving us with. The Tower of Peace. Thank you. Thank you all of you all. Thank for you, Manoj. Bye. Bye-bye to everyone. Thank you, everyone.